Greetings, this will be a quick walkthrough on the initial setup of the Excel checkbook template. After purchase, you'll have a link to download the file. I do recommend using the Show in Folder option if you have it. The first time you open the spreadsheet in Excel, you'll see a few notices which varies for those on a Mac versus Windows PC. If you're using a Mac computer, you'll be prompted to enable macros and next a prompt to enable content. Please do so. As a quick aside, your safety is important. My website has full details about the macros in the file, and you're welcome to upload any file that you download from the internet to a free service like VirusTotal, which can scan a file or website link using over 60 different virus scanners. My checkbook template will report as safe with no malicious code. Here's an example. Now for those on Microsoft Windows, the first time that you do open up the spreadsheet, you will likely see uh, a couple different warnings. For example, you might see a protected view uh, warning where you'll need to click the button to enable editing. And next you might see this uh, security risk uh, indicating that Microsoft has blocked macros from running because the source of the file is untrusted. And this is a common warning for, for any Excel file that you might uh, download from the internet. So what you'll need to do is close that file. And using uh, Windows Explorer, you'll need to find your downloaded uh, checkbook file, use your mouse, do a right click on that file, and look for an option called Properties. We'll click on Properties. And next, look for the checkbox to unblock. So click the Unblock option, and then click OK. Uh, so after doing so, we'll be able to reopen the spreadsheet file and once again click on the uh, Enable Content. You'll likely see a few sample entries when you open up the spreadsheet, and those are there just to give you a sense of, of how the uh, spreadsheet will work and how you might uh, put some different entries in. And as a, a real quick example, let's say that I want to go ahead and just put another test or sample entry in. I can either type in the date or use the little drop-down picker, which will show me the last 30 days worth of dates. I'll go ahead and click on, on a particular date here. And let's say that I visited a, a Exxon gas station. So I'll put that in and I put in the uh, what the dollar amount was. And uh, then I can uh, come over to this cell and put in the category if I want to. It's totally optional, but we do have a choice for auto gas, for example. And after designating my, uh, my uh, category there, it automatically populates a, a broader category and type. Now, as part of your initial setup, I definitely recommend that you uh, clear out the sample entries. Again, they're great for, for testing and reviewing, but you want to take your mouse and click hold down over the sample entries going as far over as to the uh, deposit column, but uh, do not clear out the balance column. That's actually a formula. So we're just gonna highlight these sample entries and I can either hit the delete key on my keyboard or if I do a, a right click, Excel also offers a choice for clear contents and that's a, also a safe way to just clear out some entries. Now, if the sample entry has also had a subcategory, uh, you'll also want to highlight uh, just those subcategory ch choices. Do not do this on category type, but just highlight those subcategory choices. And again, either hit your delete key or the clear content choice to clear that out. Okay, next you'll want to decide what your starting date will be for beginning to enter in your transactions. Uh, let's say, for example, that it's going to be 12 slash 1 slash 2024. We'll key in that date and we've got the description already for starting balance, and then we have a place here to put in that starting balance. Let's say that it's uh, $2,100.50. So we'll just put that in. And at this point, we could start to enter in some sample transactions. For example, maybe I uh, have a visit to uh, Starbucks that occurred on December 2nd. I'll click that as a date. Again, I could have typed in that, that entry. If I'd like to designate a transaction type, I certainly can. These are drop-down choices. They're not required. But let's say uh, that I went to uh, the Starbucks. And I, I do want to make note that you do also have this drop-down that you can customize for frequently used entries. And we'll take a quick visit to that here in just a moment. And my Starbucks, uh, let's say that was $12.45. We'll key that amount in. And again, I can optionally put in my uh, subcategory, which will happen to be coffee. Now, as part of initial setup, you'll likely also want to maybe give your registers names. For example, this register one, if I do a right click on that, we can go to rename and put in something like main checking, joint checking, uh, whatever makes sense. I'll just put in main checking, hit enter. 
Okay, next we're going to visit the settings screen. Now, if you don't see that as a tab, use this left arrow button. We'll click and look for this blue settings tab. Now here in the settings tab is where you can uh, customize some different options. For example, the drop down list of transaction types is fully customizable. Here's a list for the frequently used payees and you can certainly put in other entries. For example, let's say I put in Shell gas station. And if I'd like to also have it designate a, a, a subcategory, uh, we can also put that in. As we look over to the right side of the screen, we'll see the categories list for dropdown. And this is also something you can fully customize. You might want to delete entries, add entries, or just uh, change the text uh, for these entries. And to the side of the screen, you'll see uh, additional details regarding these categories and uh, what the uh, three different column headings mean. Okay, returning to the right side of this page, you'll see a note about resources which are further down. Uh, resources include a link to this getting started video along with a brief article about clearing the security warning and links to other training resources and frequently asked questions. If you have additional bank accounts to manage, you might start with the second register sheet here. And if so, be sure to clear out any sample entries if found and set your starting balance in cell G6. You might also want to visit the future transaction sheet, which will have some sample entries. Be sure to watch the full walkthrough video that covers all of the features and functions, but in summary, you can put common expenses or deposits on this sheet, and when you want them added to the bottom of your register, a single click will do so. These can be grouped in case you'd like only some added when you click the button, perhaps when it's early in the month versus later in the month. And last, there's a place to visually track progress on paying off your credit cards. Now you can certainly use one of the register sheets for those, which is helpful for credit cards that you routinely use and where you want to categorize your purchases. But for credit cards that you are no longer using regularly, that you simply want to track progress on paying them down, this sheet can be helpful. There's a place to put the bank card name, your current balance, and what the initial debt or highest debt was. And you'll have bar graphs to represent your progress. The date column is just to help you note when you last made a payment. Thank you for watching and I hope you excel with your finances.